Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. Today I have the GP1 spinner by Mech Army and I've put this on my EDC for the past 4, almost 5 days in fact. Now before I carry on, I want to give a huge shout out to Roy of Spin Scene because Roy actually sent me one of these for review. I want to mention this and I might be wrong, but I don't think that this is one of the colors that the GP1 is available in. I believe that this is a combination of two different GP1s. On closer look, you guys can kind of tell the GP1 is actually made of separate parts. You've got two outer plates, one middle plate, and it's all held in together by the Torx screws. So it's Torx security screws, look at that, six point star. Not five point like the pentalobe, this is six point, so it's a Torx screws. And I must say that when I first saw this online, I thought, oh, it's just an interesting letter I shaped kind of bar spinner, very, very squarish. But now that I've actually held it in my hand, I got to tell you, this is actually very narrow, uh, very, very sleek in design. So I'm going to tell you really quickly my first impressions when I received this guy. At first, I looked at it and I was like, doesn't really impress me very much. But now that I look at it again, the color combination looks actually very cool. And having it in this particular shape, it's actually very comfortable to hold in hand. It's strange. I don't even know why I want to kind of do this every time I hold the spinner. It just, I just feel like gripping it like that. <laughs> it's a really strange look. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that they actually have these. Uh, I don't really know what this stands for. Someone please tell me if you know. But yeah, the GP1 is written right there. Uh, and the Mac Army logo, of course. And the spinner actually comes in a pouch like this, known as the Hop Pouch, I think. I think it's what it's called. Oh, Hop Pocket, that's what it's called, I think. It's made of some kind of a cotton. It's quite a durable material, and it's pretty big for the spinner. Uh, up here, nice drawstrings, uh, nice uh, attachments at the end as well. And you have the Mac Army logo. And last but not least, yes, it comes with the tool. One of the Torx screwdrivers, but Roy mentioned that he forgot to actually include it. So it's okay. I mean, we could easily just procure any kind of Torx screwdriver if I wanted to open it up, but I don't. Now, when I finally put it in my hand and I gave it a first spin, I got to tell you guys, I was really surprised because this thing is really smooth and very quiet. <laughs> I was surprised because I didn't expect much smoothness out of it because of the way it is, like it's so narrow and stuff. But let me tell you this, this is not a long spinner. I'm getting about one and a half minute spins, almost two minutes sometimes, but uh, that's about it actually. I mean, if you look at the design, it's not particularly tapering out and the weight is actually very evenly distributed all around the spinner or all over the spinner. Even this way, it is just flat out. So something for you to take note of. If you're looking for a long spinner, then look away. You don't have to watch this video anymore. But if you're looking for a good, solid titanium fidget spinner, this guy is good. All right, I'm going to tell you a bit more information about this. It is available in titanium. There's one version that is completely sandblasted titanium on all three layers. And then there's another version that is all black. And I believe that this black is some kind of a powder coating. And then they have one in copper, which features black outer plates. And I believe that what I have on hand is actually a combination of the two titanium version so we got the black outer plates and we got the sandblasted middle plate so i think that's what roy actually did before he sent it over to me but it looks really cool it looks sweet and i like the accents on it especially these cut through slots these window slots i don't actually think they're meant for you to put tritium vials in although i can see people filling up these slots and the two out here with glow resin or glow epoxy now i'm gonna just open up the buttons and then we'll talk about the bearing retention system which is actually very simple and straightforward, but it works. Here we go. It is a 688 bearing. It's one with plastic races, and it is held in simply by these two outer plates. So if I had that Torx screwdriver, I'll be opening it up, and then we could just lift off the plate, and then we could take out this bearing and change it or clean it. So actually, uh, swapping bearings or cleaning our bearings is going to be really easy on this guy just with that tool that they provided. I'm sorry I'm not able to show it to you guys on this video, but you know, it's not mine, it's on loan. So I kind of don't want to destroy it anyway. Now let's talk about the buttons. The buttons are slightly concaved and they are not too big, but not that small. It's easily covered by my thumb, but it's bigger than the tip of my index finger. So not too small, not too big, just nice and comfortable. The one thing that I would say is that the buttons uh, I guess more or less proprietary to this where it sits almost flush look at that almost flush the spinner frame so I'll just get this half back on and you guys can see look really really small room right there but all in all this guy really surprised me with the kind of smooth spins actually giving me and I thought that protruding screws like this would actually cause me some discomfort when I'm trying to stop the spinner this way, but actually it doesn't at all. And I realized that that's because these 
screws, these Tox security screws, if you look at it carefully, they kind of chamfer the slot inwards a little bit, so that's actually really cool. It makes all of these eight screws really smooth. So all around, this guy is surprisingly smooth. Look at that, like rounded here, rounded on the edges, rounded on the outer edges as well. Very pocketable, very, very narrow, very sleek. This is probably one of the sleekest spinners I've handled so far. Personally, I don't think the design screams anything. I'm not too much of a fan of this design. And if Roy did not send this to me, I probably wouldn't even want to get one of these to review. I don't know if I'll change my mind after having this for a few more days because I've already had it for about four, almost five days. But so far, you know, it's a nice fidget spinner. It is light because it's made of titanium. And if I had the extra cash lying around and I bought all three versions of it, I would be happily mixing and matching them. I'm not so keen on it, but I know that a lot of people will actually be interested in this design. And also price point. This guy is going for 66 USD shipped. So that is actually a really huge pro to this particular spinner. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the buttons are also made in titanium. Sorry, I forgot about that. One more thing I want to point out is that Skylar Yu on Spin Space and on Spin Scene, he has done some amazing laser etching work on his Titanium, I believe it should be the Sam Blasted Titanium GP1. Man, that thing looks absolutely awesome. Like if I were to get a full Sam Blasted Titanium in the raw color, I would definitely, definitely consider sending that over to Skylar to get some laser etching work done. Have you seen it? Okay, I'll try and get a picture and if I'm able to, with his permission, I'll put it up you know, on this video somewhere on screen. All right, next up is a size comparison with a stubby. It is not that much bigger than a stubby. In fact, it looks like it's the same width as a stubby, you know, because it's in such an almost uniform rectangular shape, not too much bigger than a stubby. It's way lighter than this, but of course, like I said before, I think this is stainless steel. It is heavy. Now let's talk about the fidgetability of this spinner. First of all, I'll just say that you won't be facing any kind of problems with any way that you want to spin this guy because it's so rounded off already and it's so smooth all the way around it. Look, and it's such a uniform shape that, well, preloaded flicks, not a problem. Fidgeting, pushing forward, not a problem. Even resting your finger in the middle, it's not a problem. It's really comfortable. Pulling back, pushing forward on the raised part, on the flats as well, no problem. Fidgeting with your fourth finger here, no problem as well. Uh, you know, I don't really know how else to, to tell you that this guy is so comfortable. And it's really light, so it's easy to get a good, strong flick, just like that. Size is not too big as well, easy for you to reach out and do your preloaded flick like this or just hold it up here and take it like that or if you, you know, you use the two finger method that I've heard of where you kind of hold back the top with your index finger and then you pull back with your fourth finger and then you let go and you kind of pull it back at the same time and I have no idea how people do that but I've seen some crazy spins with that. <laughs> all in all, I think fidgetability on this guy is really not bad at all. All right, finally down to my pros and cons of this guy. For the price, 66 USD shipped for a titanium spinner. I'm talking about in particular the titanium version. This is really cheap actually. Yes, it's made of three parts. It's not like a solid block of titanium but 66. Honestly, one of the cheaper titanium spinners out there that I've heard of. And number two, it spins really well. It's a really wonderful fidget spinner in my opinion. If you're going for a long spinner, forget it. Everything about this is not designed for a long spin. This way, out here, this way, the bearing retention method. Yes, you can do table spins, but it's really cutting it close. If you have just a slightly uneven surface, you will not be able to table spin this guy. You guys already know that this has no problems with table spins because of the spin time video that I did earlier. But like I say again, if you have a slightly uneven surface like this, for example, and this is actually just like a blanket material, then no, no way, no way. Yeah, because it's really cutting it really close. Look, it's just so thin. That's also a pro. If you're looking for something that's really thin and really pocketable because this is so flat, then this definitely go for it. Very rounded, very comfortable. Uh, if you want, you know, to kind of like all these kind of slots where you kind of rub it to kind of like soothe yourself, almost like a worry stone or a worry coin, then yeah, this is good as well because it's sandblasted and gives you a kind of a very satin kind of feel, especially the powder coating over here as well. So all in all, this is one of the better feeling spinners. And last but not least, like I've said before, design is really subjective. This design doesn't really appeal to me. And I can understand that it's by Mac Army because it does look a bit rugged and very military style, almost like a dog tag where, you know, you could just have a ring here and you can hang it and it'll make an awesome necklace for sure. But as a spinner, you know, 
For 66 bucks in titanium, that's value for money if you're going for a titanium spinner because you know titanium is a very strong material yet being very light. All in all, it's really entirely up to you. So guys, if you're interested in getting one of these Mac Army GP1 spinners, make sure you head on down to Spin Scene, speak to Roy or Sean and they will hook you up. Do remember to let them know also which is the color that you want. Do you want the sandblasted raw titanium? Do you want the black powder coated titanium or do you want the copper version? Of course, copper is going to be heavier and will get longer spin times for sure because copper is a heavier material. But you know, at the end of the day, this is something that is really comfortable and even if it's made in copper, it will not be any different in terms of the way it feels and how comfortable it really is. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this review video. Thank you so much for watching and staying all the way throughout. Once again, thanks to Roy for actually sending me this guy so I could spend a few days with him. And I hope to spend a few more days with him, Roy. I hope you don't mind <laughs> before I send it back to you. And just letting me be honest and telling everyone what I feel about this guy so far. All right, guys, have a good one and I will see you in the next slice of my life. Bye.